Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's match preview, Springboks versus Ireland, the big clash. The number one spot in the world is up for grabs, potentially, um, although the Ireland will have to beat this box um, by 15 points if they were to take that uh, number one spot back. So it is really the number one spot that is the Springboks to lose, but it's not really about the world rankings, isn't it? It's about pride. It's about... Um, going and proving your worth uh, on Saturday or tomorrow. And uh, really, really looking forward to exactly what this clash is going to offer because we are talking about probably the two best teams in the world. You know, New Zealand probably not a distant third, but I do think um, the Springboks are the best team in the world of, from the World Cup in terms of, especially when it comes to a knockout game and stuff like that. And I think Ireland have been consistently um, the best team in the world over the sort of the last four-year period. So, you know, we are talking about two giants uh, at the moment in the peak of their powers as well you know you look at the caps for example you look at the teams they established the experienced players the coaches are pretty experienced teams that are very settled very close if not at their best going toe to toe it's going to be an absolutely epic encounter before we look at the team and look at some of the matchups please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well we'll start with the South African side it is one of the most experienced 15s um, we've ever named. The second most, actually. And uh, let's look at that experience, shall we? In the front row, Retekho Vaditswe or Oxen Chair, Pakistan next to Bongi Minambi and Faraz Malherba forming a really good tight um, five with Branko Moss and Ibn Etzbet in behind them. Great front row, great second row. Um, lots and lots of caps. Uh, I think the average caps in that, that tight five is like 80. It's ridiculous. A lot of that coming from, obviously, Evan Etzbeth. He's got over 100. But Franco Mossad, very experienced. Franz Mahoub, Bongi Manami, very experienced. And Oxen Chair, for all he's not as experienced, sitting about 30, 35 caps. So uh, plenty of experience there. As is in that back row, Sia Khaleesi back to captain the side. Peter Steph, the toy next to him. Quaker Smith getting the nod. And we'll talk a little bit about him in just a bit. Fafta Kirk will partner Andre Pollard in the 19 combination. Chairs and Colby, Kurt Lawrence said, Billy Lou, your back three, as really expected. Damien Delendi, JC Creel. Will equal the record set by or held by Jean de Villiers and Jacques Ferry for the most capped center pairing in Springbok history. Off the bench, we will see Malcolm Marx, Kheros Denekamp, and Vincent Koch as the reserve front row. Salman Murat, Arkes Neymar, two locks in the bomb squad, and they'll be complemented by Marco van Staden, Grant Williams, and Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu. The two backline replacements there, both versatile players. Sash Fama Gomez who covers 10, 12, 15. Grant Williams covers 9, 11, 14. Do the maths, they cover everything between those two players. Uh, let's look at Ireland, shall we? It's a very settled Ireland side. Andy Farrell has made one or two changes to what uh, uh, Rusty Russell predicted, but generally is a very similar team to kind of what we sort of expected to see. It is the pack that uh, we saw during the Six Nations, and if it's not broken, why fix it? So Andrew Porter, Dan Sheehan, and Ty Furlong will start. I think we're going to have an epic scrum battle. I'm really keen to see how that goes. Uh, now we backed up by Joey McCarthy, who was standout in the Six Nations. Ty Byrne, who for me is one of the best the utility players in the world. Peter O'Malley will captain the side. He's got Josh Bonafli, a former World Player of the Year next to him. Um, both uh, number seven tomorrow, former World Players of the Year. Um, Kenan Davis will start at number eight. Craig Casey gets the nod. No Jamison Gibson Park, um, as we know, on the tour, which is going to be a massive, massive loss for Ireland. So Craig Casey gets an opportunity. Very nippy scrum half, but not quite the same type of player as Jamison Gibson Park. He will partner Jack Crowley as expected. The back three is James Lowe, Calvin Nash, and Jamie Osborne. This potentially an area where the box can try and target uh, some inexperienced players. Calvin Nash playing just his seventh match, whilst Jamie Osborne is in fact on debut, as they say. Uh, Bundyaki in the centre next to Robbie Henshaw. That is that is quality. That is British and Irish Lions quality. Bundyaki, one of the players of the World Cup last year, one of the best players in the world, um, I think, at the moment. And next to Robbie Henshaw, who brings all the experience. Then off the bench, it is Ronan Kelleher, Dave Kilcoin. Um, sorry, not Dave Kilcoin. It's Kean Healy. Um, who is there? Not quite sure. I managed to get the wrong the, the, the wrong graphic up. Um, it is so Keen Healy, uh, Finley Beelham in the number eighteen jersey over there as well. Plenty of experience. Um, very keen to sort of see how the reserve uh, front row goes on um, tomorrow for Ireland. Because I do think that the Bach reserve front row is better. I mean, you're looking at a Keller here. He's a physical player, nice player. Uh, is Rowan Keller here, but not quite the same sort of quality around the park as, as a Dan Sheehan, but a decent scrummager. Uh, for example, I think you look at uh, Kian Healy and and sort of the experience that he brings. Um, and then Finney Bean, and we all know, you know, we all know he's an experienced player, but I do think that um, Vincent Koch 
and Malcolm Marks can definitely have a bit of a go. So for me, it'll come down to whether um, Gerstenikum can cope or not. Uh, then we've got James Ryan and Ryan Baird. Uh, good players as well. James Brown, very experienced and very impressed what I've seen from Beard in the last few uh, months. Conor Murray brings all that experience next to Karen Frawley and Gary Ringrose. One of my favorite players is Gary Ringrose. Let's look at some matchups, shall we? Um, put the teams together and let's 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 have a look. And I want to literally look at you know the teams next to each other because I'm looking first of all that front row battle: Andrew Porter versus Franz Moherber. That should be quite tasty. Um, Ty Furlan versus Oxen Chair. Ty Furlan, long been considered one of the best tight heads in the world. I don't think he's been at his best the last two years compared to where he was previously, um, but a serious operator. And I think Oxen Chair versus him is going to be a great battle. Uh, Joe McCarthy, we're talking about a, I think he's going to potentially be an island great. I genuinely rate him that highly, but he's next to or up against the greatest, arguably of all time, for the box uh, in uh, Ibn Etzebeth. Franklin Mostert versus Ty Burn, very different type of players, but both very good line operators. You then got your Circulis, who's technically next to, against Josh van der Fleer. Your Peter Omani next to Peter Steph to the toy. Caleb Dodds versus Quaka Smith. So the entire sort of pack-on-pack pack battle is very interesting. I want to look at the battle of the fly halves. Hondre Pollard versus Jack Crowley. Crowley loves to take the ball um, on the game line. He loves to be, uh, be nice and flat. Take the ball to the opposition. Put players in the space. Play off 10. Ireland do play a lot off 10. They won't kick a lot. Um, certainly not as much as South Africa probably planned to. So uh, that'll be an interesting um, aspect of it. For me, one of the best battles is going to be a number 12 battle. Bundy Aki versus Damien Delendi. Two powerhouse players. Literally just power on power. Good, both good at the breakdown. Both trying to give their, uh, trying to give their, their, their sort of teams go forward ball and uh, trying to get over that advantage line and, and put them in, uh, you know, create that sort of space, that overlap. Um, I do think Villaloo is going to be very important. Uh, you know, sort of playmaker, and I do think that that the box are going to try and target that um, that that Irish back row of Jamie Osborne, Calvin Nash, and and James Lowe. Um, you know, I think that Calvin Nash can have a long day ahead of him with Chase and Colby running at him, but I think Kurt Lawrence and Colby, we know the sort of the pace they've got. The question is, can we draw that Irish team in, create the overlaps for these players to really have a go? The next question is scramble defense for the box. Or can they cope? Because Ireland will make line breaks. They will find their way through the box defense. The question is, can the box cope with that? Then let's look at the battle of the benches. And I think this is where the three mocks do kind of come into their own. Um, I do think, as I said, from a front row perspective, probably better. I mean, I think Arke Snayman versus James Ryan and Ryan Baird. I mean, Arke Snayman, I rate higher probably than both of them. Sal Murat is a bit of a player who's a bit of an enigma. Hasn't played as much as he'd liked in his professional career, but very highly rated by Rusty Rasmus and his coaching staff. Mark of Staden. Um, you know, would be a threat at the breakdown. Then Grant Williams versus Conor Murray, completely contrasting for um, Scrum Mars. Conor Murray is very much a game management, much slower delivery, for example. Grant Williams is electric, has tried to bring in a lot of, or uh, trying to work on his game in terms of bringing in, you know, that game management, his box kicking, for example. Uh, and then you've got a Sasha Fyman Gomazulu, you know, a young, unknown player, really, for Ireland, uh, up against the experience of a Gary Ringrose, Kieran Forley, for example, coming off the bench. So many matchups to talk about. Um, so much that could potentially happen tomorrow. All I know is that I think we're in for an absolutely epic uh, game. I've got an island. I mean, I've got boxed by twelve in the Between Two Fans podcast. That's where I put uh, my cock on the block, so to speak. What do you think? Your predictions down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.